Okay, hi everybody. Um, I hope you are well today. Today, thank you for joining the Viva Mundo webinar. Uh, we are joined by the lovely Kirsten Kenny, who is from the UC Irvine uh, University, and they will be discussing lots of reasons why you should go and study there uh, this year. So let me just take you a little bit through Viva Mundo and what we do. So we essentially exist to help you guys find visa applications, uh, advice on traveling abroad, basically anything you need to help your, you on your way to studying abroad and, and finding a new uh, experience uh, abroad through your studies. Um, now, if I can just take you through Zoom, um, we'll be using this uh, app today. And if you could ask any questions, you're welcome to ask any absolutely throughout the whole webinar. Um, but if you could ask only in the Q&A box at the bottom of the screen, that would be amazing. And hi to all the Facebook livers out there. Um, if you do want to join in and ask questions, please just register on the link provided. Um, now I'm going to hand it over to you, Kirsten. Beautiful. Thank you. Well, good morning from California. Um, I know we've had some people register from quite a few different time zones. So wherever you are, I hope that you are doing well and staying safe. Um, we're very excited to um, still share with you all of our opportunities um, for studying abroad uh, with the University of California, Irvine. Um, and specifically with our division of continuing education, we offer opportunities that are actually non-degree programs. Um, now these are still uh, university programs that can advance your academic and professional goals. And I'm gonna go through these with you and kind of explain a little bit more about our school and what you can expect. Um, so once again, this is University of California, Irvine, um, and we'll go through that. So a little bit about us. We have been ranked the number one best university under 50 years old by the Times Higher Education, um, the number one doing the most for the American dream by the New York Times. And actually, let me pause there a little bit. So you don't have to be American to live the American dream. The idea is that anyone can come to the United States and receive um, training and help and opportunity to achieve whatever they're looking for, um, whether that is educational or professional success, um, that is what we view the American dream. So anyone who comes here has that opportunity to achieve that. And so we were ranked actually number one doing the most for helping people um, achieve those goals by the New York Times. We've been ranked the number nine best public university in the United States and the number three best value uh, by Forbes magazine. Um, so the University of California is a system of about 10 different campuses. So many people know UCLA, UC Berkeley. These are all campuses of the University of California and Irvine is another one of those campuses. Uh, we are located in Southern California. We're about halfway right in between Los Angeles and San Diego um, on the coast, which as you can see here from this beautiful picture. So some key facts about our school. Uh, our fall 2019 estimate was 38,000 students. We have three Nobel Prize winning faculty on our staff. 29 of our master's programs are rated in the United States top 50, and we have 100, over 100 inventions generated each year. And part of that is because of UCI's commitment to innovation and sciences. We do have a range of everything available from arts programs, um, engineering, uh, literature, languages, everything you can think of, but UCI really does have a lot of resources and commitment to science and innovation. So they're very proud of the inventions that come out of our area. And down here at the bottom, you'll see that we actually received over 122,000 freshman applications for our fall 2020 academic year, which has actually made us the most competitive university for in-state freshmen in California, um, and the most competitive for the University of California campuses. So although Irvine isn't as well known of a city um, as places like Los Angeles and San Francisco, it's a very good school with a lot of high accolades that many students in the United States um, really hope to get into and really know about. Um, also in the background, you see that little um, statue there that's an anteater. That is our mascot. His name is Peter the Anteater. Uh, many of the students love him and you'll probably see him around on a lot of our flyers and things like that. Um, he's very friendly. <laughs> so 
we refer to ourselves as the UC in the OC, meaning the Orange County, which some people probably already know. You can see here on um, the California map where we're located, like I mentioned, pretty much halfway in between Los Angeles and San Diego um, on the coastline. We are in Orange County, which is the same county as Disneyland, which most people know, um, and driving distance to a lot of places, not just Los Angeles and San Diego, but some mountains where you can get to some snow, um, Joshua Tree Desert, um, and also places like the Grand Canyon and Las Vegas, which might be a little bit further, but a lot of students like to take day trips there. So it's a really great location for exploring a lot of the United States. So the most important thing for us, we have been ranked the safest city in the United States for 14 consecutive years. This is a ranking that comes from our FBI agency and they have ranked Irvine specifically as the safest large city in the country. It is a very nice area, very beach, um, college friendly town um, where many students are safe and secure. So it's a really great location for students who um, want to be in this kind of environment, but still close to a lot of things that you can experience and other um, things going on. So we're in Southern California, there's a lot. So we've got a great um, place for students to have as a home base and go explore from here. So of course we have this beautiful location in coastal Southern California with a very pleasant Mediterranean climate. Um, this means that we have warm summers and very mild winters. So not too much rain. Um, I think we have almost 300 days of sunshine um, according to some of the researches. Uh, we are the center of Southern California's Peck Coast. So many people know Silicon Valley in Northern California which has been the hub of a lot of technology and inventions. Well, Southern California is now becoming the tech coast, especially in Orange County. And they're essentially becoming like the Silicon Valley of the South. So like I mentioned, there's a huge um, push for science and innovation in this area. There are a lot of businesses and startup and resources available for people who are interested in a lot of those um, uh, industry. So places like Google, Amazon, Blizzard Entertainment, they all have locations here um, in Irvine or the, the Orange County area, which makes it a great place for students who are interested um, in these fields. And I can go over more to um, a lot of our programs that speak to that. Now for Orange County, we are a vibrant and diverse economy. We would be calculated as the 45th largest in the world if we were autonomous. Um, so there's a lot of opportunity, a lot going on here. And of course, we're near world-class cultural shopping and entertainment destinations such as Disneyland, Surf City, Angel Stadium, which is uh, American baseball and so much more. So this is our UCI campus. Um, you can kind of see the white outline um, of our campus. It's quite large and as you can see, very close to the ocean. Um, one thing I should mention, if you remember, um, our fall 2019 student body was about 38,000 students. That includes undergraduate, graduates, uh, doctorates, and students with Division of Continuing Education. Now, all of the University of California schools are quite large. They're considered large research institutions. Now, for that reason, UCI and a lot of um, other schools, they break up their university into smaller schools to still help you maintain a feel of community and knowing where you belong. So, for instance, there is a school of engineering, there is a school of the arts, there's a school of education, and there is us, the division of continuing education. So we are a part of the University of California, Irvine, but we have our smaller communities to help students um, not feel so overwhelmed by the large sizes, to help you get smaller class sizes, um, and to still help you make these connections with professors and students, even though it's still a very large um, school. So just wanted to point that out. Um, our campus includes uh, recreation centers, sports fields, more than just um, the classroom. So you can kind of see some of that in that outline, but still um, pretty large campus, all things considered. So a little bit about Division of Continuing Education. Um, this is our building. So this is where most of students' um, classes take place. Uh, we are on the campus, um, short walk to most of the other buildings. This building is actually quite new. It was opened in 2016. 
which is already four years ago, but it was completely, it's all technologically advanced. It's LEED certified, which makes it a green building. So it's environmentally friendly. A lot of technology um, in this building. So students have a lot of state of the art opportunities in their classrooms. So these are our programs that we offer. So again, these are non-degree programs, but we do the English language program. So to help anyone improve their English, our accelerated certificate programs. These are postgraduate certificates um, for students that also include internship experiences and OPT opportunities. If you aren't aware of OPT, this is a benefit for international students who study in the United States that gives them work authorization in the United States for up to one year. So I'll be going over that in more detail when we get to that program section. Then we do have university programs. So these are preparation programs. So if your goal is to get a degree, we can actually help prepare you and help you apply to degree programs in the United States. And then we have some youth summer programs as well. So we will go into all of these individually. So first of all, our English language programs. Um, these cover everything. We'll help you improve reading, writing, speaking, and listening skills. And our intensive ESL course is fully accredited. So our three options for the English language programs are the intensive ESL, conversation and culture, and business English. So first one, intensive, in, intensive ESL. This is to help students prepare for university level study career advancements, or if you have really um, big accomplishment goals uh, for yourself for English. And these are all done in 10 week sessions. So as you can see, you do not need any English to enroll in this program. Students who want to take intensive ESL would arrive, they would take a placement test, and you would be placed in any of our levels one through seven. So depending on the level that you're in, the curriculum does change just a little bit. Everybody still has a full range of English language training. So you can see there's grammar and writing, reading and vocabulary, speaking and listening. And when you get to some of the more advanced levels, um, you'll have the options for some communication skills, speaking and listening, and then some of our electives, which include things like idioms, um, accent reduction, further grammar um, courses, and a few others. So depending on your level, you would receive either 20 or 18 hours of academic instruction a week. Now these are offered every quarter. We run on the quarter system that goes with our seasons. So we have the fall, winter, spring, and summer. Um, and these are off intensive ESLs offered in these 10 week sessions every quarter. And that is important to mention because our next one here, conversation and culture, this is offered in um, winter and summer. So we have a few different intakes during those times, um, but this is not offered every quarter. So that's important to think about when you are planning your programs. So with conversation and culture, you, uh, for each four week session, you would receive up to 90 hours of instruction and you get to practice your English and everyday conversation in a very fun and interactive atmosphere. And students can do this anywhere from two to 12 weeks. So depending on when you enroll, if you started at the very beginning of the winter quarter in January, you have the option to stay that full 12 weeks through March. Some students just wanna stay two weeks and at that point you can enroll pretty much any week um, or you can do it in increments two, four, six, eight weeks. So it's very flexible for students who are able to get away for uh, summer or winter quarters. So our sample schedule there, you could have a specialized course that is kind of like an elective. So you can choose what you want to have the specialization in. You have the speaking and listening options. And then again, there's the pronunciation and vocabulary or business writing option for you. Um, and similar to our conversation and culture is business English. So just like conversation and culture, this runs in the two through 12 week sessions in the winter and summer quarters. Now, this does require a minimum English proficiency. So you can see halfway through the screen on the left-hand side, you do need to demonstrate at least a 45 on the IBT TOEFL or equivalent. So we do have on our website all the English language tests um, that we accept, which is a, a pretty big list, including Duolingo. Um, but this is the only English program that does require some English knowledge first. 
um, but this is for students who really need English for their business purposes. So we have a lot of students whose companies even send them to improve their English for their work specifically. So you get English for business topics, English for business communication, and then you can do the business writing or pronunciation and vocabulary. Um, you can see the topics um, may include things like management, marketing, negotiation, advertising, presentation skills. So these all rotate throughout the year. So if it's very important to you, for instance, that you only want to do like the negotiation, you can reach out to our staff to figure out when that one is being offered and make sure you enroll during that time. Um, but again, this is the winter and summer sessions and you can do it anywhere from two weeks up to 12 weeks. So that is our English language programs. Now our accelerated certificate programs, these are some of our most popular programs. Um, these are specialized programs that balance the theory and practice of the, um, uh, the specializations that they are in. Now, each certificate is three months long. They are full-time daytime programs and they can articulate into a degree, which means that if you are still working on your college degree, many students take a certificate from UCI and they're able to transfer those credits back to their home university um, to make it count towards their degree. Now, it's not necessary to do that. Many students have already completed um, their university, but it's just nice to know that that's an option if you're in that um, situation. And our accelerated certificate programs, which we refer to usually as ACPs, um, have a huge emphasis on real world experience. So the instructors um, are experts in these fields. There are a lot of opportunities for um, uh, guest speakers, a lot of um, uh, like field trips that go on location to these places. And again, these can be paired with the internship experiences and then the work authorization in the United States. So a little bit more about these. The benefit of an ACP. You can enhance the value of a degree you already have. You update your knowledge and skills. As we know in this day and age, knowledge is moving so fast and things are always updating. Most of our ACPs are in a business focused field and I'll show you the list of them. But in that sense, it's very important to continue your education and to continue learning and updating your knowledge and skills. So things like certificates are very beneficial. Um, you get to visit American companies. And like I mentioned, there's a lot of opportunity and a lot of great companies in our Orange County area. You can develop a professional network, not just with the instructors, but with your fellow international students. You gain practical experience with an internship if you choose to do that and you can take advantage of the work experience opportunity. And of course, in the end, you earn a certificate from one of the top 50 universities in the world. Um, so many students who are considering MBAs actually come to the, our ACP program instead because they're getting education from a University of California. They can pair that with the work opportunities and even stay in the United States and get the work experience. And this is all for much less than an MBA program. Now, of course, this really just depends on your own personal goals. Of course, some students will feel that MBAs are uh, more appropriate for them, but some students find this as a great alternative to MBAs. Now, we offer ACPs every quarter. You can see the list of our upcoming program dates from fall through next summer. Um, however, not every certificate is offered every quarter. So it's really important to check on our website to see um, the ACP that you might be interested in, which quarter it is offered so that you are able to plan that accordingly. Some of them are offered every quarter, some of them are offered every other quarter. So it's just important to check that schedule um, if you're planning to do an ACP. So this is our current list of ACP options. Um, we are always trying to develop and add more, but as of now, this is our current list. So as you can see, there's a lot of business focused ones. So starting with business administration, um, down to uh, international business operations and management, international finance. Um, we do have some that go a little bit outside of the business field. So creativity and product development, data science and predictive analytics, um, international tourism and hotel management, a meeting and event planner, and even our teaching English as a foreign language certificate. Um, and this will all also be up on our website if you ever need to check. I'll just let you guys have a look at this screen. 
and the internship experience. Now, it is not mandatory, but if you would like, as long as you take at least one certificate, you are then able to add on an internship experience afterwards. And your internship will be in a field directly related to the certificate that you completed. So if you completed the international tourism experience, um, or ACP, you would then have an internship experience related to tourism. Obviously, this makes sense. Um, but it's important to know that because if you take more than one ACP, your internship will be related to the last ACP that you completed. Um, now, our admissions team can help you understand all this if you are getting to the enrollment period to help you um, plan this all out. Um, but if you want an internship in a specific field, you want to make sure that that's the ACP you do before. The internship. But I'm getting ahead of myself. So what is the internship? Well, it's 20 to 35 hours per week of unpaid practical work in that industry for up to three months. So the internships actually have the same dates as the certificate programs. So whenever you see the certificate dates, an internship can be done during that time. Um, so when you do these, you gain exposure to the dynamic business environment of Orange County, again, the 45th largest um, economy in the world. You would combine your classroom learning experience with direct career experience. You learn new skills and concepts in a real world setting and you're able to make these professional contacts. Now in this program, you'll also build your resume and learn interviewing skills. So the internship program isn't just the internship. We do resume workshops. We do mock interviews to help you understand the interview process in the United States. And they also do networking nights to give you an opportunity to make a connection with a, an employer yourself. Of course, we have a staff who will help place you and find you a company in, that, in the event that you aren't able to make a match on your own. So students have done it both ways. And of course, you get to experience the business work environment in the United States, which can be very different from other cultures, as many students have reported to us. And that little note in the bottom, as I mentioned before, the internship placement will be relevant to the most recently completed ACP. The only exception here is that the internships for our TEFL program, Teaching English as a Foreign Language, actually take place in our own ESL classroom. So if you do the Teaching English as a Foreign Language certificate, um, the internship related to that will be with our own teachers in our own ESL classrooms, which are great because now you'll com be completed um, the program with the knowledge of the certificate and have direct teaching experience under a certified teacher as well. So that's really important to people in these fields that they get that experience to help them um, become marketable and, um, and uh, have a leg up like in searching for employment. Um, and the next thing here is our OPT. So this is called optional practical training. This is a benefit from the US government for um, international students who are on a student visa in the United States. So what this is, is it is the ability to have work authorization in the United States for up to one year. Now, the way that you qualify for OPT is that you must have studied for nine months in an OPT qualified program. Now, our ACP program is qualified for OPT. So as you can see, you would need to study in that program for nine months. Now, most commonly, students who want OPT will do two ACPs and then an internship. With each one of those being three months, you have then studied with us for nine months and you are eligible to apply for OPT. Your application for OPT actually goes to the U.S. Citizenship and Immigration Services. And our staff does help you with the application and they do workshops and help students understand what they need to do and submit those applications. Um, I think there's something like a over 95% acceptance rate for students to get OPT. Um, the only time I've ever seen students get denied OPT is if they violated their visa status in some way. So as long as you followed all the visa rules, um, you completed the program, everything, students usually get the OPT authorization. And also what is great about this is that it's work authorization for the United States, not just California, not just Orange County. So this is a huge country. So you, when you have OPT, you actually have the opportunity um, to find work anywhere in the country, 
a lot of students like to stay in California. Some students have gone to New York City, to Hawaii, to Texas. Um, so you really have the whole country as an opportunity to you once you get the OPT. So this is a really great, unique experience um, for students who want this kind of um, um, experience to put like on their resume or just, you know, to have in life. So this is a great point for the ACPs and why a lot of students um, like to choose these programs, especially over things like MBAs. So the ACP requirements. Now we ask for a university degree or substantial academic or work experience in the area related to the certificate you wish to pursue. So it is possible to still be enrolled in a bachelor's degree program um, and take these ACPs, um, especially if you are already studying in that field that you're interested in getting the certificate in. Some students have still made the case that maybe they have personal experience um, or other experience that they can apply and still get accepted into the ACPs. And then of course, there is an English language requirement. So as you can see, we have a list of some of the English language tests and the scores that you need for the ACPs. So 71 on the IBT TOEFL, 530 on the paper-based TOEFL, um, 6.0 on the IELTS. On our website, we list actually a lot more, including the Duolingo tests that are acceptable, but they are all about equivalent to about the same level there. Some students enroll in our English language program first to kind of improve their English before they go to the ACP. Now, if this is something that you're interested in, if you do our intensive ESL program and you complete the level five course of ESL, you can go straight into the ACP without needing to demonstrate um, a specific English language test. So that's also an option for students. You can definitely uh, change between these programs, take English first, then enroll in the certificate. Um, it's very flexible. So moving on to our university programs, if you are interested in um, getting a degree, we can help you get there. So we do undergraduate preparation and graduate preparation. And then we also do our academic study abroad program. So I will get into these. So IUPP is our International Undergraduate Preparation Program. And this is really great because in the United States, your bachelor's degree is four years long. You can take our preparation program for up to a year and still graduate in those four years. So in our IUPP uh, program, you would be able to start taking classes at the University of California, Irvine. We help you prepare for the tests that you need, including things like the SAT or the ACT, English language tests, um, and other cultural adjustments, excuse me, courses. And then we have counselors who help you look for the programs that you might be interested in and apply to these programs anywhere in the United States. So for instance, students who are in IUPP might say they want to go do biology at Harvard. They can start taking biology classes at UCI. They're taking um, the preparation courses for their English language um, and the SAT tests. And then our counselors can help them uh, fill out these applications for Harvard, help them understand all the application requirements, get those together. Then the student can apply, hopefully get into Harvard, um, and then apply the biology courses they've already taken at UCI and then enroll in Harvard and already have up to a year completed so that they can still finish their bachelor's degree in four years. So that's one of the best parts of our international preparation program. So as you can see, it combines the academics, um, the support from our counselors, and then the community. You're already getting involved in an American university and transitioning into the academic research and student life at an American higher education institution. And the entry requirements for this program. So you do need to have a cumulative undergraduate GPA of 80% or higher. And then there does need to be a minimum English level language proficiency. And of course, you would take a lot of ESL courses to help you get even higher than this. But for starters, this is what we look for when students apply to our preparation program. Now, the International Graduate Studies Preparation Program is very similar. The idea is that we can help you prepare for graduate studies in the United States. Now, this one has two different tracks. There is a research track and a business track. Both of these are offered year round um, and there are different options. So you can do a six month option if you do not need any extra English language training or the nine month option, which does include intensive English training. 
Now, again, these help you accumulate or acclimate, excuse me, to uh, university life in the United States. They will help you research and apply to different graduate programs in the United States, and you are already taking certain courses and gaining credits for your graduate level program. This is also really great for students who are interested in graduate programs, but have certain um, prerequisites that they still need to meet. So you can be taking some of those prerequisite courses at UCI and then have those for your application to the schools that you're interested in um, applying to. Now, our business program actually includes kind of the ACP option. So the business preparation program includes an ACP, a certificate in one of the business fields, and the internship experience. So these are a lot of different ways to help improve your application for graduate school if you do need that little bit of extra help. And here are some of the IGSPP entry requirements. So you do already need to have a bachelor's degree. The undergraduate GPA needs to be at least 80% or higher. And then there is the minimum English language proficiency required for um, entry into these. And again, if you are going to do, um, this is for the six months, so if you don't need English language training. So if you do need English language training, there would be um, a little bit higher of the English language um, requirement. All of this is on our website, but I'm just hoping to give you a little bit of insight into that. Okay, then our academic study abroad program. This is for students who are currently enrolled in a bachelor's program and they just want to do a short exchange for maybe um, a semester or two at a university. So we are on the quarter system. So the academic year is the fall, winter, and spring quarters. So if you are interested in doing an exchange um, at UCI, you can come study with us for one, two, or three quarters. That equates to either um, one or two semesters. And you can be taking any of these courses at the University of California, Irvine, that you would then transfer back to your home institution. So many universities um, around the world, they already have agreements with certain universities where they can study. Um, however, if you want to come to UCI and your university doesn't already have an agreement with them, you can always do this through us um, directly. And then you would work with your academic advisors at home in your home university um, to transfer all of these credits back. Um, we do have the English language proficiency needed here as well, which is the equivalent of an 80 on the IBT TOEFL. And then that proof of financial, sufficient financial support, that's required for students for the, getting the student visa. So that's actually something that you demonstrate to us and then you would show when you get your student visa um, from the U.S. And our youth summer programs. So this is for students who are currently in high school or university. Um, and these are to help highly motivated students gain the international academic exposure and develop your edge for college applications. So I don't know if I have another slide on this. Okay, yes, I do. So it's called Experience University Research, and they are either two to three weeks in the summer for university or high school students. You get to take actually some university courses, although they are non-credit, um, and this includes research methodology and English language writing. You'll get an introduction to American universities in the admissions process. Um, and there's, awful, there's also an optional intro week of intense English at an additional cost. And there's tons of activities that you get to do with UCI and an international students all around Southern California. So this is a great summer program that also helps um, get you some extra academics and help with your application. Plus you get to network um, with professors at the University of California, Irvine, and get to meet a lot of other international students too. This is great for students who might need a little something extra uh, for their applications, either going into undergraduate or graduate level schools. Um, and a great way to get a letter of recommendation as well, which is often needed um, for American universities. Okay, so we've covered all of the programs that we offer at Division of Continuing Education. Now, if you enroll in any one of these programs, where do you live? <laughs> well, we have two options for housing. There are university apartments, and that's what all of these pictures are. Well, not that family, <laughs> but they are beautiful. Um, they look even more amazing than where I live. These are fully furnished two bedroom or two bathroom apartments for four students. So you do would have a roommate. There are options for um, private rooms as well. Um, the, they all come with kitchen, laundry room, and these beautiful facilities, jacuzzis, swimming pools, sports facilities. 
um, you're hooked up with wireless internet, local phone, cable TV, and a lot of community building activities. These apartments are very close to campus. So they're walking distance. Um, some of the apartments actually even give you a bike if you want a bike to ride to school. Um, and there are shuttles that can come pick you up too. So they're not on the campus, but very, very close to them. They're also very close to a lot of the university like shopping centers that include movie theaters and grocery stores and different restaurants and things like that. Um, so it's a great location still where all the students are. The other option is a homestay. So you can have a private bedroom in an American family home. You would get to, of course, experience the American life with the family support system. And you actually have a lot of flexibility here for adding meals. So a lot of these homestay options, you can say, I want no meals, or I want just breakfast, or I want just dinner, or I want all the meals included. Um, so this is really up to um, your preference if you want to live with a family or live in the apartment. Um, some students mix it up. So if they're doing more than one, uh, for instance, program, like if they're doing two ACPs, maybe they'll do the first ACP with the homestay, and then they'll do the second one in the university apartment. Um, it's really just up to the student and what you're looking for. Um, but we tell you here, you can contact the housing providers directly for more information. We have them all listed on our website. Again, because there's so many options, private room, shared room, meals included or not, um, the prices really vary. So we, we recommend you talk to the homestay providers directly. Uh, the only thing to consider between these is that the homestays are usually located a little further from the campus. So that's the only thing to think about if you will be okay with, if you have to take the bus or if you take Ubers, um, you'll just be a little bit further out from the campus. Um, but many students still stay with homestays and have a wonderful experience. And now we have a short video for you, um, which I believe we'll play here about our campus and our programs. I know some of those students, so it's always kind of fun to see that video and see their faces. Alrighty, so that's a little introduction, a little illustration of what we got going on here. So a little bit more to cover. Okay, so this is a great resource on our website that I want to touch on for people. If you don't believe me, you can ask one of our students. So we have on our website, I included that screenshot so you can see where to find it. Um, all the way over on the contact, go down to ask a student. 
This is a platform where we have current students who actually have accounts on our website that can help answer questions for you directly about the programs. Um, or even if you want to know, for instance, how a student from your country has experienced Irvine. Um, how it was getting a visa or how they have acclimated or how they're finding life in, in Irvine. This is a great resource to find a student who maybe is in the program that you're interested in or from your home country um, to help answer some of these questions for you. Um, of course, it always helps hearing it from a student directly, which I totally understand. So if anyone is interested in that, I just wanted to point that out that this is an, um, a resource on our website for potential students to get kind of that information. And some of our additional services. So when you take our programs, you don't just sit in a classroom and go home. There's a lot that we'll do for you and help you every step of the way. So we have the academic advisor. So if you're taking one ACP and you've decided, oh my gosh, I might want to add another one, or maybe I want some extra English language, academic advisors will help you understand our programs and help you enroll in certain things that might be right for you. We also have immigration counseling. So they will help you with your student visa, help you understand all the terms and conditions, help you make sure what you're doing is correct, and of course help you apply for OPT if you are eligible and want to apply for the work authorization. We have educational and recreational activities. We have a conversation club um, for language and cross-cultural exchange. We have an optional airport pickup, so if you want, we can pick you up from the airport and take you directly to um, your housing. We have student support advisors available 24-7, um, especially through what we call My SSP, which is an app where you can speak to someone in your native language. Um, health insurance, huge student life and activities department, and of course, access to on-campus computer labs and libraries and everything at UCI. So when you're here, you really are a university student and have lots of resources and options for you. Um, this is some pictures of some of the activities our students have done. So you can see everything from going to um, American baseball games, visiting the Grand Canyon, a weekend trip to Las Vegas, even going to San Francisco, and even on-campus activities, um, festivals, uh, sporting events. Um, so students really get to experience so much of California and the United States when they study with us. Now, what does all of this mean in the age of COVID? So let's talk a little bit about coronavirus and how UCI is handling this. So UCI, our campus, went into lockdown March of this year as a direct response to the state healthcare guidelines. So as soon as we were instructed to lock down, we did so. UCI will not compromise health or safety of students or staff, and we are taking the situation very seriously with several precautions that are in place. So as of right now, everyone is at home including myself, as you can see. So during this time, all of our staff, including our student advisors, we are still available and in direct communication with our students for any and all questions and concerns. So our programs did go into a remote learning environment for the rest of the spring quarter through summer quarter. We maintain a resources and updates page on our website for our community that is continuously informed on our procedures and any changes. So this picture is a screenshot from our website. So you can see we have that banner of the coronavirus resources and updates, and I provided the URL there to visit the site directly. Um, we are helping students who are in distress from this, um, personally or emotionally, and we're helping students understand if they need to return home, how to do that, how to stay safe in the United States, resources for them while they are here, um, and everything else related to coronavirus. Um, we are still here and available in supporting our students who are taking our courses, whether they have stayed in the United States working remote or even returned home and doing classes remote. Okay. Now, as of right now, UCI is fully remote for summer 2020 quarter. However, for fall of 2020, the Division of Continuing Education is planning to hold classes in person and broadcast the sessions um, remotely. So this means our fall 2020 courses are still going on as planned. If students are able to and want to study on campus for fall, we are allowing that. Um, however, 
if you want to take a fall course but are unable to get a student visa, which I know can be challenging right now, or you just don't want to come study on campus, you can still take these courses remotely. And because we're offering them both ways at the same time, if anything happens during the fall quarter where we do end up needing to go remote again, everything is already in place and ready to go. But for now, we are welcoming students to the fall campus in person at the Division of Continuing Education. Now, not all of UCI is doing this. So um, their undergraduate programs will not be in, held in person. So for this reason, this is actually allowed Division of Continuing Education this opportunity because there will not be um, nearly as many people on campus as we normally would. So there will be much less chances for exposure. And of course, we are continuing to follow the instructions of health officials. And of course, as we all know, any of this can change at any time. Uh, but we would be sure to communicate this with you. So if you enroll in a program and anything changes, our admissions team will be communicating this with you so you understand everything going on and know what to do. Now, because we'll be open in fall of 2020, these are the current requirements that will be in place um, if you are studying on campus with us. And this is also goes for some of our staff too. There's required training for all students, instructors, and staff to understand um, how to prevent the spread of coronavirus and what is necessary for them when they are on campus. There will be physical distancing in the classrooms and reduced classroom sizes um, as far as the amount of people. There is enhanced cleaning and sanitation in all classrooms and public spaces. And classrooms will be completely sanitized in between each class as well. Face masks will be required for all students and instructors who come to campus. Hand sanitizers are installed in all the classrooms. And anyone coming to campus is required to complete a symptom self-evaluation. So this is um, also for staff. So anyone who's saying, I'm coming to campus today, there will be a website or an app where you need to check in and mention if you have any of the COVID symptoms. And of course, if you do, you would not be coming to campus. You could continue to take the class remote, um, but anyone coming to campus needs to self-report that every day. So we are taking it very seriously. We have a lot of precautions in place um, and to hopefully make um, having people who are coming for fall 2020 feel comfortable and have everyone stay healthy. So these are our current plans um, under this current situation, which as we all know, hope ends very soon. <laughs> And that is it for my presentation. So I'm happy to take any questions at this point. Um, I know that I've seen some coming in, so I think uh, I can get some help getting those <laughs> answered for me. That's okay. Thank you so much for your presentation. Um, yeah. We covered quite a lot, which is great. We do have quite a few questions here. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna kick start this off with the first one. Um, there is one question that is asking, is all the information currently provided for only your university or all UCs? Just for UCI's Division of Continuing Education, yes. So each UC campus is its own campus, so they have their own rules and regulations and things like that. So what I have given you is just for UC Irvine. Um, is the IELTS required for IB students or students who have studied in an English-speaking school? Oh, great question. No. So like I mentioned, there are other ways to demonstrate English language proficiency. Um, one of these is if you have been enrolled in an English speaking school or having things like the IB. So if you're ever applying to a program, um, you can submit these documents and our admissions team will help you understand or know that your admission, your English language requirement was satisfied. Great. Um, what is the TOEIC? Oh, the TOEIC is another test of English. Um, it's just like the TOEFL. I think it just depends what country you're in, what one is offered where, and maybe if it's more popular, but it's essentially just another test of English. Okay, that's great. Um, and we have another question. What kind of financial aid for international students are UCI offering to study uh, a graduate program, master's degree, or PhD? Okay, sorry, say that again. The, um, the financial assistance for master's programs? Yes, and PhD, if possible. Okay, so that really depends on the specific program that you're interested in. So each department has their own amount of funding. So for instance, if you wanted to apply to computer science, the School of Computer Science, that department, they have a certain amount of money that they get to decide who they give it to and how much. And that would be different than if you're applying to the School of Education, for instance. 
So it's really important to check with that department directly to see what their options are. Now, I can tell you that for the most part in the United States, PhDs are usually fully funded. So that means if you're applying to a doctorate, you can almost always assume that the tuition is covered. It's, it's funded already. Master's programs, it might be a little bit more difficult for, but because it's so different depending on the program you're interested in, I'd really recommend you to contact that department directly in the school that you're looking at. Great, um, and we do also have a question about undergraduate programs. Could you highlight some more information about that? Um, sure. So like I mentioned, the Division of Continuing Education um, does not do like the undergraduate degrees, um, but we can help you apply. And at University of California, Irvine, and most of the UCs, we have almost everything offered. So one thing I can show you, you can still see my screen, right? Yeah. <laughs> okay. So um, I'll pull up here. Sorry. <laughs> we'll just do it here. UCI.edu, which is the main UC website. If you see here academics, these are the list of the schools that are broken into. So there's schools, social science, schools, social ecology, public health, and within each one of these schools are all of the majors that are offered for you. So in their academics, I mean, it, it's pretty wide ranging. Um, we have almost everything offered. The only things that I've had students ask for that we don't have are um, architecture. That's a big one. And then we, we don't have like fashion design. I've had some students look for things like that. We do have costuming in the art department. Um, but otherwise, you can actually go through our website and see what you're looking at because we have a really big range. You're pretty safe to assume any of the UCs have what you're looking for. Brilliant. Okay. Um, and we have another question here. So if I am studying currently at a university at Columbia as an international engineering uh, student, um, and I want to make a master's abroad at UCI, I need, how, how, how can we go about that? Um, so if you want to basically, you would just be a, they're currently enrolled as an undergraduate. That's correct. Yeah. And sorry, what was the program they were interested in? International or industrial engineering. Ah, uh, okay. So for the degree programs on our main UCI website, um, websites these days, by the way, have like a lot of information. Um, so you, there, it depends if you're doing undergraduate or graduate. So you could easily go to the graduate admissions and then they would give you, for here, you can see we have applying to UCI international students directly. This will walk you through everything that you need to do to apply. Now, depending on the program that you're interested in, it could change, but I can tell you in general, you need to have things like your transcript from your undergraduate degree showing your grades. Um, usually a sample of your work, whether that is um, a project or a paper that you've written, um, letters of recommendation, and then as an international student, you will also need to show a test of English. Um, and what is known as the GRE test, this is very common in the United States. It is um, basically a college entrance test, but the GRE is for graduate level. So those are like the main components of graduate degrees in the United States that you would need to prepare to have for applying. Okay, well, I think that's the end, actually, of the uh, current questions. Um, so I'll get you out of the uh, firing seat. Um, but you answered really well. Thank you so, so much for your presentation. Uh, thank, thank you guys for participating and asking a lot of questions, which is really helpful. Mm -hmm. um, as usual, please do uh, check out viva-mundo.com and sign up to our newsletter to find out any more uh, information about any studying abroad. Any last words from you, Kristen? Um, Thank you everyone for your attendance. And I know that we're all very anxious to be past um, the current situation and study abroad again and travel. And we are very anxious for that time and still ready to welcome students and preparing our programs for you. Um, and we would love to have you in Southern California with us. <laughs> Amazing. Okay, well, I guess that's the end of the uh, webinar today, but thank you all and have a great day.
Bye. Bye.